Hello everyone and welcome to this second video in this Phoenix A320 full flight tutorial series where we take you in detail on a full flight from Manchester to Prague. In the last video we did the full cold and dark cockpit preparation setup and in this video we're going to show you how to set up the MCDU and all the flight plan computer so that everything is set for our flight to Prague. If you haven't done so already, please do check out the first video in this series as all of this flight links on one video right through to the end and everything can then be done in sequence and you're free then to easily fly alongside at home in your own simulator. So let's get on board and start setting up the flight management guidance computer. So with the cockpit setup all done and the passengers boarding, let's go ahead and look at setting up our flight management guidance computer for the flight today. The first thing we need to do is ensure that the simulator has all the information it needs from SimBrief, if using a SimBrief operational flight plan. In order to do that, we need to just go to our ATSU menu, then over to the AOC. From here, flight init, and then we just need to hit the init data request. That then ensures that all the information for our flight that you have created in SimBrief then comes through into the simulator. And there we can see there's our call sign, departure, destination, alternate, and the flight time, estimated time and route, one hour, 39 minutes. So let's go ahead now and begin the full setup. First thing we need to do is go to our data page and on here we're going to just check the IRS is aligned so we want to see three green navs on, uh, on there. Back to the data page, we'll come to the aircraft status. We want to check that we've got the correct engine database, so the CFM engines here, and we've got a valid active air act cycle. Of course, if you don't have a subscription to Navigraph, then you won't be able to update this to the latest one, and you'll be reliant, of course, up on the air act cycle installed in Microsoft Flight Simulator. What's very important is that your air act cycle, your nav database in Microsoft Flight Simulator, here in the Phoenix, and on the SimBrief website are all the same one. Otherwise, the SimBrief website could create a flight plan for you, which is not going to be valid here in the simulator because it has two different air act cycles. Once that's all been validated and we're happy, we can then go to the init page. So we're going to hit init request and via the ACARS downlink, we're going to get all of the information required to begin setting up the flight. This obviously just takes a couple of seconds and then from here we're going to begin entering all the information. So our flight number today is Echo Zulu Yankee or Easy and the call sign is 64 Delta Lima. Now what goes in here is actually the call sign that's going to come up on the air traffic controller's display screen. So whilst our flight number today for the passengers is U21801, the call sign that the pilot uses on the radio and to speak to air traffic control is EZ64 Delta Lima. So you want to make sure that it would be your call sign and not the passenger flight number that goes in here. The cost index today is eight so we'll go ahead and update that and then the cruise level for today's flight is planned to be flight level three seven zero and the temperature is minus forty six we then can update the tropopause altitude again from the operational flight plan today i'm showing two nine two oh six just update that and then we can do the winds and this is where it just pulls in all the wind information that has been uh, that is on your operational flight plan what this doesn't do is download live winds from the internet so if this is an old flight plan so perhaps one you created yesterday or even a few hours ago then these winds are valid for that flight plan obviously if you're lying in Microsoft Flight Simulator in live time then these winds won't be accurate so try and make sure that the, that the flight plan you're using is relatively up to date within uh, within an hour or so once that's all done, we can just clear the scratch pad message out. And then the final thing we want to do on this page is just check the IRS in it. And all we're doing here is that we're checking that these GPS coordinates match the GPS coordinates of the gate that we're parked at. So we're here at Manchester and we're parked at gate 32. So if we come across to Navigraph charts, if you have them, we want to go to the ground charts 
and find the parking stand coordinates, which is usually somewhere near the bottom. There we go. Let that load. So, stand 32, let's try and find that. Here it is, stand 32. So, 5321.8 north, 5321.7 north, and 216.7 west. 216.7 west. So, let's now, once we've confirmed the NAA page is done, we're going to go on to the flight plan. So, the flight plan you could obviously use on an external window, or you can also have the operational flight plan here on the tablet. So, in order to do that, we'll go to our pilot brief, make sure that we've got our flight plan, and then we can reference everything across from here for ease. So, our flight plan today, we're departing runway 23 right, and we're on the Samba 1 Romeo departure. So, in order to do that, we're going to click our departure airport, top left, select departure, find runway 23 right, and then scroll down using the Samba 1 Romeo departure. We'll then insert, and then we want to put in the arrival. So the arrival is runway 12 on the Lomki 6 Papa. So, select your destination, arrival, ILS, runway 12, and then once again scroll down for the Lunk 6 Papa. What we'll then need to add in then, if there is one, are any veers. Now the veers are the initial approach fixes for this. Let me show you what I mean. So here's the charts for our arrival, the Lunky 6 arrival. If we just have a quick look, we can zoom in and follow our arrival through. So we'll arrive here at Lomki, we're going to fly the 6 Papa, which takes us up here, and then we're going to be coming in via Somis for runway 12. We can confirm this as well, if we go to the ILS runway 12 page, we can see that there are several initial approach fixes for this runway. There's a Somis over here, a Vimi up to the north, and there's also the full procedure which has you fly over the Oscar Kilo Lima VOR and then make the kind of teardrop approach back in. So as we're coming in from the west today via Loki, it makes sense that our initial approach fix is going to be a summit over to the west at the start of the approach down here. So if we had selected Evimi, then off this list, what we would have to do is fly kind of through the ILS to Ivimi and then come back around and in. That obviously doesn't make much sense. And we're not going to fly direct to the airport, VOR, Oscar Kilo, Lima, and then make the teardrop approach because that is the kind of approach that is usually only done if you've had a radio failure and you can't get in touch with air traffic control. The reason you would do that is then air traffic control could see what you are doing and then once flying back outbound, they would know that you have intended to land and they could ensure that they uh, can keep traffic away and uh, separated from you to make a safe landing. That not being the case today of course we're going to come in via Somis so that's what we're going to enter just here. Once we've done that we can click temporary insert and then you want to go ahead let it uh, just calculate the distance of the flight route that you've put in. So we can see the distance there is 733 miles. We're then going to cross check reference that over here on your operational flight plan we've got 727 miles. So only 10, 11 miles difference. That is absolutely fine here in Microsoft Flight Simulator. If you had got a discrepancy of say 30, 40, even 50 miles, then you would probably need to go and look because something may not have been set up quite correctly. Or you may have put in the wrong initial approach fix or the wrong departure, etc. So we're happy with that. That all makes sense. Our flight plan page is now complete. One of the other things then after you've completed that is to do a couple of gross checks. So if we have a look at our departure, we're on the Samba 1 Romeo today, we can see the Samba 1 Romeo, we want to climb straight ahead and then once we are three miles from the Mike Charlie Tango VOR, we're then going to turn right to heading 274 and then another waypoint five miles from the Mike Charlie Tango, a left turn to Tabley. 
and you can see that all of these are matched up here there's a uh, three miles from Manchester five miles from Manchester then Tabley and then 58 miles from Honolulu direct to Samba and we can see all of that is coded in correctly all of the constraints are shown here on the right hand side here in magenta so once again if we just bring that chart back up and have a look up on the chart we'll see that at 58 miles from Honley we need to be between 3,000 and 5,000 feet this is of course can change if ATC are online and they clear you to a higher altitude sooner but if not then that's your initial climb out and we can see at Samba we've got the uh, 5,000 shown just here at this point you can also check your initial climb sometimes it's shown down here at the bottom of the chart but if not your last constraint is 5,000 feet so your initial climb for this departure is going to be 5,000 feet at which point if you wish we can then go here to the FCU and select 5,000 all of that looks good one final thing you can do to check that the uh, whole flight routine is fine is we can go to the plan page just zoom out a little bit and then from here we can see both the navigation page and using the uh, the up arrow to scroll through we can click this and watch the navigation display and see how that has the entire route without any discontinuities or anything like that and there is our arrival as we expect into Prague if you do have any discontinuities gaps in the flight plan which normally occur between the standard instrument departure and the main flight plan or the start of the uh, the star then in order to clear any of the waypoints including discontinuities all you would need to do is go in select clear and then select where the discontinuity is so for example if I wanted to clear out Samba for some reason I could go ahead select that that's done I would then need to go in clear the discontinuity and that's done as well obviously I don't want to insert this I want to leave the uh, standard instrument departure as it fully is published so in order to erase what I've done there we can just hit erase the temporary flight plan so that is now all set up on to the next page then we're going to the radnav page so here in the Phoenix the aircraft radnav page does exactly what it does in the real aircraft and that is it has auto tune which means that both VOR1 and VOR2 radio receivers automatically tune to the nearest VOR so obviously here at Manchester the nearest VOR is Mike Charlie Tango the Manchester VOR there are of course other VORs nearby to Manchester so up to the north is the Pole Hill VOR which is uh, the identifier is Papa Oscar Lima so if I go ahead and just pop that one in there we can see that obviously enters and changes notice how the text is different this one here is small this one there is large if it is small it is because it has been auto tuned and as we fly away from Manchester this will continue to update and auto tune to the nearest VOR that we're flying over this one however because we have manually entered it shows larger text and this one will not change so that would stay tuned to Pole Hill for the entire journey obviously it wouldn't pick it up for the entire journey as we move away from the uh, the receiver range in order to get it back to uh, auto tuning we can just clear and clear that out and you'll see automatically then it reverts back to the Mac Charlie Tango next then we're going to continue and come to our init B page now in order to do this the init B page is where we start putting in some of the aircraft weights the fuel and things like that we need before we can do this the preliminary load sheet now when you're setting up here in the Phoenix the preliminary load sheet may not yet have been received so I'm just going to take you through the various different steps that we can do to uh, to program this page in until we've got all of the final information that we need from dispatch so let's say we're setting up and boarding may not have started or it may have started and you've not yet received your preliminary load sheet message from uh, from your airline dispatch what we're going to do is we're going to use our operational flight plan to help fill this in so we're going to start with the zero fuel weight for today's flight this is found on your uh, operational flight plan from Simbrief now at this stage remember that these are rough figures these are planned figures and not actual figures the actual figures will only come from your final load sheet and I'll show you that in a little bit so let's pretend we have no load sheets at the moment but our zero fuel weight on the operational flight plan today is 56.3 so we're going to go ahead and pop in there 56 point three and then for the zero fuel weight center of gravity 
we're just going to pop in a standard zero fuel weight center of gravity of 30. Now, I stress again, these values are likely to change, particularly this, uh, this second one. So this is just for the purposes of setting up. We're then going to put in the fuel for the alternate. So on our operational flight plan today, the fuel required for the alternate, if we just bring this across so you can see, is 1,254. Well, we're going to round that up because it's better to be a little bit more conservative in these situations. So we're going to pop in there. If we said 1.4 tons of fuel, 1,400 kilograms, then that is nicely conservative and we can enter that in just here. After that then, normally if you're familiar with flying the fly-by-wire Airbus, then you would need to enter in a trip wind. That of course we don't have to do here in the Phoenix because we can automatically download the trip winds for the entire flight, which we did on our Init A page. So trip winds we can leave blank. We then want to press the fuel planning button. And the idea behind this then is given all the data that you've popped in here and your flight routing, the aircraft is going to calculate how much fuel it thinks it needs to successfully, safely fly the route. If once we've pressed this, the block fuel here is less than the actual fuel you've got on board, which today is just under seven and a half tons, then something has gone wrong with your fuel planning. And as you can see today, we've got a block fuel required of 7.6. And once again, just double checking, we've got less than that figure up here. Now, the actual reason for that is because I filmed the first part of this tutorial on one day and this video on another day. And of course, during that time, the winds have changed. So we've probably got a really strong headwind today which means the aircraft knows this because I've input those winds so it needs more fuel than we originally planned if this does happen it's quite easy to fix all we need to do is go to our config page which is on the McDo menu over here and then once we've done that we can go to fuel and let's just for clarity let's load in eight tons of fuel overall so we can go in and select 8,000 kilograms, eight tons, and that's now done. We should be able to come up here, double check, and see we've got eight tons of fuel now showing. So that is 400 kilograms of fuel extra that we've thrown on at the last minute, and that's gonna be quite important a little bit later on. We will then need to go and update the block fuel, so let's go and pop in, we've now got eight tons of fuel overall. Once it's done that, it will then calculate that we have got an extra 30 minutes of flight time. That doesn't sound like a lot, but remember, of course, that's just 30 minutes of thinking time because all of the fuel included in this fuel for the alternate and your overall fuel for your main trip, taxiing, etc. That's all taken into account. Even a go around and another attempt at landing at our destination is taken into account. This 30 minutes down here is just for extra time, perhaps in, uh, in a hold or or if something has gone wrong and you need to just uh, enter the hold, you've got an extra 30 minutes to uh, to play with. So don't worry if that figure is uh, it seems a little bit low. After this has been entered, then we can see we now have a takeoff weight shown. So a takeoff weight of 64.1. Also worth noting here at this point that a takeoff weight of 64.1 is less than the maximum landing weight. The maximum landing weight for this aircraft is 64 and a half tons. If we're departing with 64.1 tons on board then that means that if anything went wrong following our departure we could safely get back into land here at Manchester we wouldn't be overweight now all this has been filled in, we're just waiting to do our performance takeoffs. Now we can't enter any of our V-speeds until we've done a performance takeoff calculation. And we can't do a performance takeoff calculation until we've got some weights from dispatch. So let's go ahead and now see if we have got our, uh, our load sheets. Now because I'm doing a steady tutorial video here, the chances are there's going to be quite a few messages when we come in. So if we go to our Atsu page and then over to the AOC menu. We'll come down to received messages 
and we'll see from here these are all the load sheets that have been sent the one we're going to be looking for is a preliminary load sheet at this point chances are one of those messages was our final load sheet but I'm just going to take you through the setup now as we would do this because obviously the passages will be loaded and boarded as I've been uh, as I've been talking so if you've got the preliminary load sheet at this point we're going to go back to our init B page and we're going to update some of these weights so we can see here that our preliminary load sheet says a zero fuel weight of 56.3 that is accurate and then we're going to come and have a look at what the zero fuel weight center of gravity is now quite important that we don't get these confused so the zero fuel weight center of gravity is this figure just here it's called MAC on the actual load sheet we don't need to go into details about uh, about what MAC is but essentially it stands for the mean aerodynamic chord which is well beyond the scopes of this tutorial so for all intents and purposes the max zero fuel weight is exactly the same as the center of gravity zero fuel weight so the max zero fuel weight figure here is 30.9 let's go ahead and update that popping a slash in there because we're only changing the second field here so we're going to pop in 30.9 and then at this point we could start to run some takeoff performance calculations in order to do that of course we need to head over to our tablet over on the tablet then the electronic flight bag we're going to go to the departure performance app select that and then you do have the options of either syncing the final load sheet numbers or syncing the preliminary load sheet numbers now in order to keep things realistic here I'm gonna first run a calculation with the preliminary load sheet as you would do and then you would check that against the final load sheet when that comes through so for all intents and purposes at the moment let's pretend we've only got the preliminary load sheet in at the moment so we know we're departing Manchester and it's runway 23 right the runway surface is dry we can select any flap configuration you wish either have it calculate the optimum but normally we'll go flaps one we don't want to force toga of course unless it is uh, a short and contaminated runway so we'll leave that to no and the ice will be off and the packs will be off and we've got a takeoff weight showing of found on the uh, init B page takeoff weight showing of 64.1 so we'll go ahead and insert that and then we want to get the takeoff weight C of G. Very important point here that we don't enter this value here. This isn't the takeoff weight C of G, this is the zero fuel weight C of G. The takeoff weight C of G will be found once again on your preliminary load sheet just here. And there it is. So the takeoff weight C of G, Mac, is 29.2. So we'll go ahead and enter that in. 29. Point two. We can then either enter the weather manually or I like this little button here. We can sync the live weather. So there's our live weather. And then we're going to select whereabouts we're actually going to depart from on the runway. Are we going to use a full length or are we going to use an intersection departure? Full length is obviously shown with the distance, the takeoff runway available. Full length intersection mic or intersection hotel now from a little bit of local knowledge I know that usually air traffic controllers will uh, get uh, aircraft departing off intersection mic and one of the things you'd really do is check that these values match up with the information you have on your charts so if you do have access to Navigraph then you can find the uh, takeoff runway available and confirm that in the various uh, charts available here we go this is Manchester's runway 23 right takeoff run available so we can see these all match up so from the runway head which is full length we've got uh, 2897 taxiway mic 2567 and that's the value that uh, I'm going to use it's also nice to use an intersection departure because if we just have a quick look at the uh, the airport map for uh, Manchester for example so finding mic one which is just here if we run a takeoff performance calculation from here 
and air traffic control if you're flying on VATSIM end up giving you a full length departure well then that's okay your takeoff performance is still valid you've actually got a slightly longer takeoff run available than uh, than you had initially planned if you did it the other way around however and you did a takeoff calculation using the full length of the runway and air traffic control told you that you were going to be departing via mic intersection then you would need to run your takeoff calculations again because you would have less runway available so again it's about being conservative running the intersection departure means that actually if you're given full length you are still going to be fine and you uh, won't need to rerun those calculations so let's go ahead and select intersection mic for our departure today we'll give that a second and there we go we've got all the information we need to go in and enter into the performance page so we've got v speeds of 137 140 140 for uh, vr and v2 let's go ahead and pop those in So with the VSPs entered, let's just have a look. We've got transition altitude of 5,000 feet. Again, you can confirm this using Navigraph charts if you have it. We've then got the thrust reduction altitude and acceleration altitude shown there, also given here on the EFP. And we're using flaps one and the flex for the takeoff shown here is 64. Now, there are a couple of other values here just to quickly explain. So the takeoff shift is shown just here. So 300 meters. That no longer needs to really be entered because the A320 nowadays has GPS. So it already will calculate exactly where your aircraft is the moment you set your takeoff thrust. In the olden days, without GPS, it needed to know where the takeoff, where you were actually departing from. So as we're not taking off from the, uh, the runway head, Head, it would have needed to know that we're taking off from an intersection which in this case is 300 meters further down the runway but because we now have GPS in this modern age we don't need to go ahead and enter that so we can leave that one other thing to mention as well is the THS the trimmable horizontal stabilizer now this is showing here that we're going to have to set this to down 0.1 well we're going to leave that for the time being and I'll explain a little bit later on in the tutorial series why we're going to leave that and why we don't need to enter that here in the, uh, the flaps and THS settings. So we can just go ahead and leave that all blank. Okay, so everything is all done from, uh, from this point of view. The only thing left to do now is set up the secondary flight plan. So the secondary flight plan is exactly what it sounds like. It's another flight plan entered into the flight computer which pilots can activate quickly if, uh, if they need to. And a good example of this is if on takeoff there's a problem, perhaps a, uh, an engine failure or something else that would require the, uh, the pilots to think, hang on, we don't want to continue with where we're going, we, <coughs> we need to go somewhere, enter a hold and sort something out. Well, that is a great example of when the secondary flight plan would be used. So we're going to set up the engine out procedure for departing off runway 23 right here at Manchester Airport. Now, Engine out procedures are airline specific. I'll give you two guesses as to uh, which airline's uh, procedure I'm, uh, I'm going to be mimicking. But you can set up anything you want as your engine out procedure, but it is basically a, uh, a backup for if something goes wrong, you can activate the secondary flight plan and the autopilot will fly the aircraft off into a hold somewhere while you troubleshoot uh, the problem and work out what your next move is going to be. So, in order to set up the secondary flight plan then, obviously, if we go to our secondary flight plan page, and the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to copy the active flight plan. So now the secondary flight plan is exactly the same as our main flight plan on, uh, on this page here. The difference is now that we want to have a look at what our engine out procedure is. There are a couple of ways to get this. You can obviously make up your own, uh, but if you have used the SimSmart app for the A320neo in the past, this comes with several engine 
This comes with several engine out procedures for a lot of major airports and this is being updated all of the time. The engine out procedure is shown here at the bottom. So for runway 23 right at Manchester the engine out procedure is what's called a standard engine out procedure. That means that you can just continue flying in a straight line on the runway heading without having to worry about any terrain and uh, having to turn. Whereas a non-standard engine out procedure is usually a little bit more complicated and that you need to uh, basically get out of the way because if you continue flying on a runway heading in a straight line there's a chance you could fly into something. Thankfully here at Manchester it's pretty straightforward so it's a standard engine out procedure which means we continue out on a runway heading and then once we are at or above 1800 feet we make a right turn to the Mersey holding point and we enter the hold at the Mersey waypoint inbound courses 061 and right turns. So how would we enter that then into the secondary flight plan? Well the first thing to do is to just think about how we're going to want the aircraft to fly. Basically we're going to want that aircraft to continue to just fly on a runway heading. So let's say we're going to ask the aircraft to fly on a runway heading to about 10 miles. That should be plenty of time away from the airport to get up to uh, at least 1800 feet or more. And then we're going to have the aircraft turn to the Mersey waypoint and enter a hold. So there is no waypoint 10 miles straight out on Manchester's runway heading so we have to create one and a typical name for this is the engine out SID or engine out standard instrument departure so we're going to make this up engine out standard instrument departure and we're going to place that just here. Now a little bug at the moment, what would make sense would be to place it just here, but doing this in the Phoenix for some reason seems to delete your actual departure runway and airport. We don't want that, so we're going to pop this in just here as the uh, as the third part of your flight plan. Once we've done that however it's going to tell me well hang on I don't have an EOSID in my uh, database it's not a known waypoint so could you please tell me where that waypoint is. We're going to tell it where that waypoint is for us today. So the place is going to be based off of Manchester's runway 22 right. So Echo Golf Charlie Charlie 2 3 right there's the place, but for some reason a bug in the Phoenix at the moment doesn't allow me to enter Manchester's runway 23 right as the starting point. Uh, probably because it's not an actual waypoint. What we can do however is just use the airport itself, which is obviously Echo Golf Charlie Charlie. So we'll use Manchester Airport as the place. We then want the runway heading, so the runway heading for runway 23 right is 232. And then we said we want to set that to 10 miles away. So now our engine out SID waypoint is going to be on a track of 232, 10 miles away from Manchester. Pop that in there and store it. And once we've done that, we can go back to our secondary flight plan and enter in the engine out SID waypoint that we have just created and we're going to pop that in just there. Then of course we can also clear the discontinuity if we wish but we're not going to at this point because we're going to put in the waypoint which we're going to hold to, the Mersey waypoint as part of the uh, full engine out procedure. So let's pop in the Mersey waypoint and that goes just there. This is the waypoint then that we then want to enter a hold at and the information for the hold, if we select it, we can program a hold just there. And the inbound course for our hold was 061. And the hold consists of right turns. That's now all programmed. And then we want to tell the secondary flight plan that if we're doing this, we're not going to be we're not going to be continuing on to uh, on to Prague. So we're going to set up an arrival back here at Manchester's runway two three right. In order to do that, select on the hold point of the Mersey flight plan. New destination, Echo Golf Charlie Charlie, back here in Manchester. And then, just as you do on the normal flight plan page, we select that destination. Select an arrival, runway 23 right, and the difference is this time we won't put any star in and we will have no veers. 
in the real world if you had an engine failure or something as serious that uh, you need to get back in due to an emergency then air traffic control would probably vector you in anyway so you wouldn't need to worry about for applying a, a full procedure click return and that is our full engine out procedure now done in the secondary flight plan we can also check what this looks like on the navigation display so there it is we have got in white the secondary flight plan displayed here on the navigation display let me just bring that in a little bit there we go so what would happen if we activated the secondary flight plan after departure we would take off the aircraft then target our engine out SID that we manually created it will then take us off on a right hand turn to the Mersey holding point and then what you can see here is the start of the approach to runway 23 right which we'd put in remember there it, that is a direct routing back in for the ILS there is no start and there is uh, no initial approach fix etc and then the white line that you can actually see here is the go around track for the arrival back into runway 23 right so for example let's say we activated the secondary flight plan entered the hold got radar vectors from ATC back to fly and I ILS approach for some reason had to do a go around that is the go around track shown as well and the Phoenix has the go around track in for all ILS approaches so even in Prague there would be a go around track that you'll see a little bit later on in this uh, tutorial series so that's all done our flight plan is set up our secondary flight plan is set up everything in the flight plan is now set up there's only one thing left to do and that is check the figures on the final load sheet from our dispatch so now all the passengers are seated and the doors are closed etc we want to check what the figures for the final load sheet are to make sure that our takeoff performance calculations are still all valid in order to do this we'll go to the atsu menu to the AOC menu check our received messages and we're looking for the load sheet which is the final load sheet this is the one that we're after so we're going to go onto our init B page and we want to just cross check all of these figures so the actual zero fuel weight is 56.3 that is exactly the same that's good to know if it had been more if it had been less we may need to rerun some calculations but what's really good is the Phoenix does actually simulate this so thank you so much for watching i realize that this tutorial has actually been rather in depth and complicated so if you do have any questions so please do leave check. a comment down so the below zero fuel i'll come back and answer as is the best same. i can thank you so much for watching if you have uh, enjoyed this please take do hit that like button 60 hit the subscribe point as five well hit the subscribe button as well if you're new to the channel and of course turn on the take off weight show here that is good if in the take off weight here and showing to be more than the take off weight show here then thanks so much would have to rerun the soon. performance Bye -bye takeoff calculations if it was more than 250 kilograms higher anything under that you could leave it but more than 250 kilograms higher you'd need to rerun your performance calculations and get some new v speeds let's just scroll down then and see what else we've got so the zero fuel weight center of gravity is 32.4 but because our takeoff weight is going to be less than what we've got here we don't need to actually go in and update any of these figures all of these figures are still valid uh, takeoff weight C of G however is 30.5 now this is important because this figure here 30.5 is what we're going to be setting our trim wheel to when we've pushed back we can't do it here at the stand because the fly-by-wire aircraft uses hydraulics it doesn't use cable and pulleys so we can't actually manipulate the trim wheel at this point until we've got engines started but the 30.5 takeoff weight CFG is what we're going to set this to and you'll see that a little bit later on in the tutorial series this is the figure that we use rather than using on the performance page the up versus down THS as shown here on the uh, on the performance calculator all that's left to do then is go ahead and click accept and we're all set We've got all of the information set up in the box. We've got the secondary flight plan set up for the engine out procedure. All our takeoff performance figures are valid because our actual takeoff weight is going to be less than the planned takeoff weight. So we don't need to rerun any of the new calculations. We're all happy with everything just here. It's now time to start looking at pushing back. 
Thank you so much for watching. I realize that this tutorial has actually been rather in-depth and complicated, so if you do have any questions, please do leave a comment down below. I'll come back and answer as best I can. Thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed this, please do hit that like button, hit the subscribe button as well if you're new to the channel, and of course, turn on the notifications bell so you don't miss the future episodes in this series, and of course, the live streams that we do here on the channel as well. Thanks so much. I'll see you all again very soon. Bye-bye for now.